odds it's reading zero. Yeah, you're just outputting like a... So, wait. Can I... Today we're trying to iron out a few kinks with the Arduino setup. Mainly the thermocouple I'm trying to read in, which is like in my intake track, just won't read for some reason. No idea why. My multimeter will read it, so some kind of finicky electronics problem we're having. And then we're trying to add in a few other things maybe if there's time, like try to get maybe rev limiter working in some capacity, but... What's the purpose of the thermocoupler? Uh, so we have a pressure sensor in the intake track already, which tells us boost pressure. But so when we add the thermocouple too, we can actually calculate intake air density. Yeah, that's reading. And air temps. So you can go 62 cubic feet times a thousand. And the ambient air density is the top number? Uh, it's this bottom. The 67. Right. That's the temperature. And that's the air density. 62.4. Yeah, and I'm holding it, warming it up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> making sure it works yeah and it works fine that's so that's weird and the ground is fine i'm suspicious of the ground because the the thing is when you plug it in the multimeter it's getting the right reading which means the multimeter is sending a signal through the positive and it's grounding correctly so that i can get the signal so the only thing i can think because this thermocouple works is that there's a grounding issue. Have you tested the ground on the, yeah, that one. And the negative side is 1.6. They are. I don't know so, how, how this tube is electrically grounded because it's floating in space on silicon tubes, but honestly, it might be grounding like through <laughs> there the thermocouple wire because it snakes through the and now we're at 3.8. Yeah. So it is. There is like interference then. That means that the thermocouple is touching that metal. We can confirm it if we can pull it out. Yeah, we can do that. Um, and yeah, you could check if you want. You just throw it on this middle side. And positive goes to positive, negative goes to negative. That doesn't touch Yeah. Damn, dude. Right? That's like, I'm what like, is wrong with this chip that I can't do that? Like, <laughs> work! <laughs> yeah, like, seriously. There's something in that multimeter. My Amazon multimeter does an amazing job. Why can't you do it too? Yeah. So your stipulation is that potentially the sensor is touching the inside of the pipe? You're right, sorry. I'm going to try it one more time. Yeah, it. exactly. So we're gonna try to see if it's like a unnecessary grounding problem. Can I one more shot while it's still touching metal? Sure. Oh, okay. Maybe it's not. Oh, I, un I unplugged the pressure sensor, that's why. Right. <laughs> it just pulled itself like off the wire. Did you just hold these with your finger? Like that? Did you? Oh, when you yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. 37. Fahrenheit? 31, yeah, it's Fahrenheit. 30. There were a couple madness. <laughs> this is supposed to be like one of the easiest sensors to use. <laughs> you measured the, I know, right? You measured the voltage uh, out of the SF5? Uh, yes, yeah. Did you measure the amps by chance? No. Does this thing do that? Oh, it should. Yeah. Okay. Two amps. 0.02. Should I turn it on? Sure. It's measuring three? Three milliamps? Yeah. Should we come on? Hmm. Actual jacket of this one. Oh, I tried to open that jacket to this one. I don't know. Where, where, where were you going with that? Yeah, I don't know. Just see what it's like. It's fine. It's reading 55 degrees. One more try. Totally fine. Maybe that's just a shitty thermocouple. Where'd it come from? Amazon. <laughs> this is ironic because it says like, <laughs> I like went back to buy another one and it like says on the listing that it's made for 
basically for this purpose to be plugged into a little board. The like, it's kind of bouncy the way it's like responding as of late, like it won't ever just sit at steady, which I feel like it did before. So maybe I changed something, but it seems like it needs like a dead band or something yeah. added to it. Cause it's like pretty much bounces around the entire time you're driving it. Like the, yeah, like, let's, the let's vein response that. is like all over the place. I have zip ties. Okay. That's okay. You know what's interesting is that it's like... That's just the ambient reading. So I wonder if this multimeter was working because it was picking up signal from your car. Uh, that's just that box. Could be. You know, I mean, this might just be a junk thermocouple the whole time. That'd be brutal. However, I will say we also had a problem of the wire connections not being very good. Like soldering it was a good step because that was one of the problems was there was also just like a loose connection. Yeah. And one of our original wires we put on was just bad. It had like a high resistance. Now it's reading. It's reading? <laughs> yeah. Fuck me. What's it reading? 57, yeah. 56, 55. Yeah. That is so annoying. So the thermocoupler was bad. Something is, I guess, the metal jacket doesn't insulate. Something is super fucking Or there's like a wire exposed in the metal jacket itself. Or that's touching the metal jacket. Can you throw me a grab? Uh, uh, a ground. Yeah. It's reading. I mean, it is reading. It's saying it's 65, which seems a little high, but. Straight back to 32. Interesting. So, yeah, it's grounding. And if you ground the jacket, it goes straight back to 32. Okay. So, so it needs fully insulated. Yeah. Well. I wonder, because if you grounded the jacket on the other one, it And it works. was fine. So the jacket's fucked. So it's just, so it, it's a bad insulation job yeah. on this thermocouple. Yeah. It's That's like so annoying. Or something. <sighs> it melted, maybe a water melted. Nice. It doesn't deserve the credit of melting. <laughs> That's aggravating. Damn. False confidence with that metal jacket. 1.5 stars on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> or you could insulate the whole thing. A long time. But also, you know, I feel like that was a good learning curve on thermocouples. Next time I have a thermocouple issue, or like next time you just buy a thermocouple, I'm just gonna ground it before I install it and see if it does anything weird. <laughs> should, well, I'll like, let you finish that, but we should try Cause I'm curious, the, obviously the multimeter works when that sheet is grounded anyways. That's still tripping me out. I don't know what technology they're using. I mean, it must just have a better circuit for it or something. Cause they, that thing came with the thermocouple in its packaging, like just like a probe you could like plug into it. Yeah. Uh, so I wonder if they just have like a better circuit to be less sensitive to that. So that was in fact the issue? Yeah, that was in fact the issue. This thermocouple is janky and it doesn't have any good shielding on it. I'm gonna shielding. go make some lunch for all of us. Okay. All are you good with two balls? Yeah, thank you. How are you grounding? You're not even touching anything. It receives 12 volts from this wire. Mm -hmm. And that wire actually runs into that first big switch you flick inside mm -hmm. that's just like the fuel on off for the car so i was half thinking we could just extend that wire like it could still be on the switch too mm. but then instead it'd come from 12 volts yeah. to the arduino yeah. then to the switch oh or something like that or like to the switch and then to the arduino and then to the pump but basically i was thinking we could use a mosfet to somehow toggle 
that 12 volts on and off when the Arduino decides that the RPM hit a certain point. I got you. Okay, okay, okay. And then the other I mean, part could, of Why is... aren't we just running the 12 volts? Why aren't we just running the 12 volts directly to our, the Arduino um, motor driver again? What? I mean, like we have the uh, chip. Yeah, that little chip. And we have the external 12 volts for me battery to yeah. it. Why not just run that to that again? Because then the Arduino has the logic anyways. So, Can uh, we do that? I don't even know. I well, the only problem that. would be like, <laughs> the, only, the only problem is it would only open and close when you had the pet, like the foot on the pedal. So I guess that's the negative. So this is different. This is like a uh, uh, rev limiter. So instead I want to read in the signal from my RPM sensor yeah. to the Arduino and then say it like, oh, right, right, right. 4,000 or 5,000 RPM or something, the Arduino toggles power to this thing mm -hmm. in such a way that the engine stays like below that threshold. So do you want it to just ground to 12 volts or do you want it to I want like it to modulate, be like, or do you want it to actually- I like want it to mostly voltage. give 12 volts and then drop to like zero. Cause that's, that's essentially all this is working is like it's 12 volts to the switch and then the switch gives this thing 12 volts. And yeah, you, okay. I mean, turn off the switch, this shuts off. It's like an electromagnet. Yeah, so you want to hit 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 it to ground when the RPM is at, like, X. Yeah. Yeah, another concern might be powering the RPM sensor. Does it take 5 volts? Um, well, I'll just... Look it at this takes 12. It's already plugged in, though. Like, it already works. Oh, okay, okay. Everything... Like, it already reads the RPM to here. Yeah. It's just a matter, I think, of taking a signal wire, which I already have running to the breadboard. It's like this yellow orange one. Oh, that chip That's, you have will send a signal out too? Uh, no. Oh, okay. But I mean, we have, the, like the sensor already works and is reading. We just have to like take its wire from okay. like, that display and like make it read to the Arduino. Reads. But it doesn't actually hold up the rest of the code. Because it's, it's waiting on this and this will send a signal and then you can hit it. But yeah, it doesn't hold up the rest of the code. And then at some point, everything is kind of set up that so way. So that's too. nice. If current minus last LCD, update the LCD. I'm over there, I read zero. Interesting. My veins are too closed and it almost works, but it doesn't. Uh, 600, 240, 000, 160, 0, 0, 0, 1, 20, 60, 0. Okay, I'll take a look. I need to adjust that ping bong that's making the whistling sound. <laughs> uh, what do you think was happening here? Uh, I think there's a couple things. Um, one, it was like resetting pulse count every second, and Which I think it might have made it zero fucked with the interrupts and then two it wasn't i don't think it was set up to read like something that's so fast like it's a thousand rpm so it needs to be like the interrupt needs to be fucking quick like it needs to read yeah that's right uh, to work uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah. okay start to go I think it's reading it fast enough. But now we're at 15,000 RPM. She's it's, silent. It's, it's, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think it's the sensor is like putting. All right, so you're getting the car ready for the dyno next week. Guesses horsepower and torque. No. <laughs> okay, last time we did 80 horsepower. Do you remember the torque? I don't. I don't either. I want to say it was like very similar to. <laughs> so irrelevant. I know. We just have to do it to see how I see how off I am at the end. Well, last time it shattered my hopes and dreams, so I'm gonna say we're gonna make like 110 this time. Okay. I feel like that's pretty conservative. I'm gonna go less conservative and say 150. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so I can look like an A gad on. I'm saying on 110 camera. horsepower, maybe like 180 torque or something. Hmm.
Alrighty, so kind of to wrap up all the mishmashing we were doing today, we actually got my thermocouple working. It turns out the heat shielding, it's not heat shielding, but the wire shielding itself was grounding on something and therefore causing a no read. So I covered all of the sheathing in electrical tape and it now reads. So we have a density reading for the first time in pounds per cubic foot times a thousand, which is awesome because that'll help me kind of tune things in. And then we jumped onto working on getting the RPM sensor read into the Arduino today. And we just managed to get that going. We were kind of fighting with some loose wires for a minute that were skewing how it was going. But at any rate, next time we session, we should probably have some kind of RPM based tuning available. And we're gonna try to get an RPM limiter, like a rev limiter set up as well, using a MOSFET or something. So just getting more functions out of that Arduino that we already got strapped up should be pretty sweet. Thanks for watching.